Hello and welcome. I am Mrs. Light and this is my channel. Today I'm going to read to you some truly terrifying stories. Some could be paranormal, others definitely aren't. Nonetheless, they are all truly terrifying. Before we get started, if you would please give this video a thumbs up, I would appreciate that. If you would share this video with people who enjoy spooky stories, paranormal, also true crime, I'd appreciate that. If you'd like to be subscribed and you are not, please go ahead and do so. If you'd like to be notified when my content goes live, please go ahead and click that bell. All right, let's get going. By the way, there's a severe storm going on behind me. So if you hear some spooky sounds, thunder, rain, it's real. These have all been told as true stories. A few weeks after our daughter was born, we had a really hard night with her and she wasn't settling. She was in her basket beside our bed and her brother, who was three years old, was in his bedroom. She finally fell asleep around 5.30 a.m. and then our son woke up shortly after. We could hear him singing through the baby monitor, which we still used on him because he'd begun sleepwalking. We were both lying in bed silently listening to our son when a female voice on the baby monitor did a loud shh. My husband leapt up and ran through to our son's room and I heard my son ask, Daddy? Who's that? He told them that it was me, but our son insisted that it came from the foot of the bed. Since then, we've both heard what sounds like someone walking up the hallway when everyone is in bed. And I've experienced a strange feeling where if you leave the apartment and have to go back in for something, the atmosphere has changed from a happy family home to terrifying. It's gotten to the point where if I do forget something after going out, if it's not absolutely essential, I will not go back in. Our second one. When I was a kid, I had no curtains or blinds over my window in my room. There's a street lamp just outside my window, so anything that walks past my window like a deer will cast a shadow onto the wall opposite of my window. Two nights in a row, I woke up to see the shadow of a man on my wall. I didn't have enough courage to turn and look up at the window to see who it was. It was really late too. I knew it couldn't be my dad because I could hear him snoring. The worst part, my bed was in front of the window with my head at the bottom of the window. So whoever was behind me could probably see me. I think that this is the scariest thing to have ever happened to my house because it's not something supernatural. And our third one. When I was in my teens, my parents took a vacation but left their cars in our driveway. It was just my grandmother who lived in our house, my younger sister and myself for nearly two weeks. One random night, I woke up to our dog growling and the motion sensor lights in our backyard turned on. I got up and walked towards the front of the house and noticed a shadow coming through the bottom of the door crack. Somebody was standing there. I slowly creeped my way to the peephole, and when I looked out, I saw a giant eyeball looking in. I froze for a second in panic and then rushed the phone to call 911. As I was running away from the door, the person did one really loud slam on the front door and gave off a laugh that could have been the Joker from Batman. As I'm calling the police, I run to one of the windows to see if I can see what the person looks like, and I notice an old, icky car speeding off down the street. I never knew who it was or why they were there, but the police believed it was burglars thinking that nobody had been in the house because the cars hadn't been moved in days. 
our next one. One evening, as I was in my room, I hear our front door open. Now, my room is extended past the front of the house, so I'm always the first to hear someone coming through. We also had those big double doors that were really heavy, so it was loud regardless. My room was also next to the stairs, so I can see people going up. Back to the story. I hear the door open, and I quickly glance to see someone walking the stairs. After a few seconds, I hear my little sibling start yelling, Yay, Daddy's home! And they rush upstairs to follow him, and my mom quickly follows. A few minutes pass by, and they all run downstairs. My youngest brother was in tears, and everyone else was in a panic. Apparently, there was no one. Even though they all swore they saw somebody go upstairs. A lot of strange shit happened to us after that. And now, when I was younger, I spent the day helping a neighbor rake leaves on his property. He was friendly with my family, so he walked me home so he could say hi to my parents. We walked into the house and heard my mom upstairs talking. It sounded like she was on the phone and she was walking around. I called for my dad and there was no answer. My neighbor said, well, it sounds like your mom was on the phone. I'll catch him later. We said goodbye and he left. I went upstairs to find my mom. I couldn't seem to hear her anymore. I searched the house and it was empty. I was thinking, did she leave while I was saying goodbye to the neighbor? I called my dad's cell phone. My mom didn't have one. And he picked right up. I asked him where he was and if he knew where mom went. We're at the store. We've been running errands for a couple of hours, he said. Instant goosebumps. My neighbor and I both heard footsteps and the woman's voice. I have no idea who or what it was, but we both heard it. I waited outside until my parents got home. Our next one is short but sweet. I'm pretty sure my house is a murder house. There are multiple doors that have deadbolts on the outside. The root cellar has a drain in the floor and deadbolts on the outside of the door. There are big hooks in the attic on the cross beams. The downstairs window has been bricked in. My apartment was robbed once and broken into again a couple of months later. The spooky part? I had just moved in when I got very, very ill. I had to go stay with my parents while getting treatment at the hospital. No one had been to my new place or even knew the address. It was full of unpacked boxes as I was too ill to move in. The robbers left the TV. They left a jar of cash on the dresser. The only thing they took were my diaries, multiple diaries. I always buy the same kind and they date back for years. They were packed in different boxes too. Someone had rifled through my stuff, found the diaries and took those. They'd even left my recipe books, which are the exact same style as the diaries. So they had to have checked. My apartment was on the third floor. There was no sign of a break-in, but there were small handles on the outside of the pillars on the porch that went all the way to the ground. Perhaps they climbed? The second time, I returned home one night to find the light outside of my door was off. I didn't think much of it, except that I did need to call and get it replaced. I unlocked and opened the door and tried to turn on the light. Nothing. I thought maybe the power had gone out, but then I looked over and I saw the microwave with the correct time on it. Something about that spooked me. And I went to wait in my car after I called the apartment complex on call agent. He came over and I waited outside. He came out and told me to call the police. As it turns out, nothing had been taken, but every light bulb in my apartment had been unscrewed just enough so that the lights would not turn on. The cops came and checked it out and found nothing suspicious. They told me to stay somewhere else for the night. The next day after telling my sister what happened, she and her boyfriend drove in from three hours away and installed deadbolts 
totally against the complex policy, but the management was just as creeped out as I was. Nothing else creepy has happened in the two years I've lived there. Here's another short but sweet one. The fingerprints on the outside of my window. More have been popping up all winter. I'm on the third floor. Weird things keep happening in my daughter's room. Every pet she's had that is in her room ends up dying. I know pets always end up dying, but hers are a lot quicker than usual. She's had several fish that randomly die. She had a turtle that just died one day after about a month. She even had a bird that died after about two weeks. I just always find some sort of random explanation, but it still creeps me out. When her bird died, I was out of town. When I got back, my sister told me what had happened the night before they found it dead. My sister, nephew, and my mom were all downstairs just hanging out when they heard my daughter run down the stairs saying someone was in her closet. Of course, they all told her that no one was up there. Then they heard someone laughing from her room. So my sister got a flashlight and a gun to go check it out. There was no one there. The next morning when my daughter woke up, the bird was dead. And finally, I'm gonna share with you a story that I haven't told on here before. Whether this story is paranormal or not, it's up for you to decide. One night when I was about 13 or 14, it was Friday, my parents were gone. They always got paid on Fridays. We lived in the country. They would go, quote unquote, into town to go eat, go grocery shopping. It was their date night. I was gonna go roller skating. Yes, roller skating. And while I was waiting for my ride, I was lying on the couch and I fell asleep. My ride was going to be there at 7 o'clock. It was winter. So it was long, dark by then. When I heard somebody call into my ear, Tracy, get up, you're late. Tracy, get up, you're late. I jumped up. Our house was completely dark. All asleep. Before it had become very dark outside. As far as I could tell, there was nobody there. My parents weren't home. And after that, things began happening in the home. Now, when I woke up and it was pitch dark, I walked to our front room and our front door was open. And I thought I saw a black figure there. I couldn't make it out. And shortly after that, very, very shortly after that, my friend's mother pulled into the, our driveway to come get me and I ran out of the house, got in the car. And after that, several more times, not just me, but my family would see a black figure standing at our front door with the door open. We hadn't opened the door. It started to happen so often that my parents went and bought two Doberman Pinschers, which I've talked about on my podcasts. But that is the reason why we bought the Dobermans. My parents didn't want to accept something paranormal. They thought there must be somebody, some black, faceless figure opening our door and standing there. And it had to be a real person. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it. 
that people are like scary and paranormal and true crime. Please come back. Good night.